Let's talk about returning production. So college football is in the deep, 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 deep off season. Deep off season. It's now we're past National Signing Day. We're past uh, a lot of the big signposts that come along in the college football off season, uh, and so we're kind of into the slog before spring football starts. Uh, you know, the summer is kind of rough too. Although you have media days to look forward to, uh, but uh, our friend Bill Connolly, formerly of SB Nation, now with ESPN. Uh, has got a piece up on ESPN that came out, uh, I guess, a couple weeks ago about uh, college football teams with the most returning production in 2020. And so uh, there is uh, this is kind of difficult, right? Because there are good ways to look at this and then I also think misleading ways to look at it. For example, let's put it this way. All right. Let me just put it this way. How much, uh, if you were a really good offense, right, but you lose everybody, is that better than having a really bad offense but bringing everybody back? It's it's kind of yeah. there's there's things like that. Like you get the you can just look at a a, a number of returning starters, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but which I feel like once we start going through the list, people are going to agree with you completely because I did when I was typing it in. I was like. I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing that that team is bringing everyone back. <laughs> right. Uh, but at the same time, you can look at what go- what people have coming back as a measure of, okay, this is as experienced as they're going to be. And Bill kind of dives into uh, things that I think are really, really impressive uh, and, and really deep diving into it uh, with his SP Plus stuff. Uh, but one of the things he looks at is what is most indicative and telling about how much it, about what matters more than other things. Mm-hmm. For example, he, he makes the point that on offense, some things, of some positions are more important than others to have coming back. For example, the, the, uh, the quarterback coming back is by far the number one thing that is indicative of returning of production going forward as mm-hmm. as predictive of what your offense is going to look like next year. Quarterback. I don't think that's necessarily a surprise, right? No. What surprised me is second on that was receivers and tight ends and the number of, you know, like how much of your receiving yards do you have coming back? Next up is the number of career starts on your offensive line that you have coming back. Um, and then la- and then after that, so that's like, you're talking about, and uh, let me, say this the next one there is offensive line snaps from the year before so what they're saying is having a three-year starter at the center position is more important than having uh, a guy who played all 12 games last year that is prioritized over um over how much you played last year if that makes sense just for knowing the system basically. yeah i think so and and i think that that's that says and and the last of the list by the way is the percentage of running back yards Rushing yards. It's just like that's just not as important. Uh, on the defensive side, what I found to be particularly interesting is if you're going to have continuity, according to Bill Connolly at ESPN, uh, ESPN, if you're going to have continuity on the defense, you want it to be in the secondary. You want it to be in the secondary. That having continuity in, in the secondary is a lot more important than having continuity uh, in the defensive front, on the defensive line. In fact, he, he the way he measures it in the formula he puts together, it's like six times more important. That that is going to be now part of that I think is teams are passing more, mm-hmm. right? And having a pass defense is probably going to be a lot more, uh, you know, is, is more difficult to come by. And the learning curve I think is steeper in the secondary than it is on the defensive line. But I found that to be particularly interesting. That uh, continuity on the line matters matters far less than continuity in the pass defense. Um, which is, I, I thought, interesting. So he took a look at this, and he, he saw, okay, what amount of returning, um, uh, what, what amount of, of returning production does each team have left? We're going to go from bottom least to most. This is bad news, but the least amount of returning production coming back is UTEP. Mm-hmm. UTEP, in fact, ranks 118th on offense and 119th on defense as far as returning production is concerned. Part of that is that they are getting wiped out, pretty much wiped out in the secondary. That's a big, big, that that that, that stinks for them. Yeah. They're going to have to redo things. They are 129th, second to last in the nation in returning production going forward in 2020. Next up, though, 
Not far ahead of them is North Texas. Uh, North Texas ranks 114th in offense uh, coming back. Part of that, obviously, is you're losing Mason, Mason Fine and you're losing a fair number of those receivers, yeah. too. You know, And if I remember correctly, a lot of that offensive line is going to go, too, mm-hmm. or at least part of it. Which, I mean, on that Well, point. I mean, that, yeah, but <laughs> still, if you believe that continuity, continuity matters, right, exactly. then they don't necessarily have it. Yeah. It doesn't help that their defense is getting pretty much wiped as well. They're 108th in returning de- uh, on, on defense. Uh, as far as returning production is concerned. Next up at 118 is Texas State. Uh, this is kind of back and forth. And, and I think that, honestly, this may be a little bit misleading. Because on one hand, on one hand, a lot of their defense is getting wiped. They're 126th in returning production on defense. 126. That is bad news. Yep. But the offense is only 81st. They got 59% of their returning of their uh, production coming back. Uh, on on offense, which is not bad. And when you think about a second year under Coach Jake Spavital, who is an offensive guy, mm-hmm. I feel like that's probably what you want. Like if you were going to choose which one you were going to have, that's probably the one that you would want. Uh, and so that is um, that I thought was a little bit interesting and maybe a little bit misleading. That while Texas State is 118th in these rankings as far as returning production, their offense is their offense well should improve from that. <laughs> correct. Their offense is getting they're getting hurt less than the defense. Mm-hmm. So that that's a little bit interesting. Uh, next up is Baylor. Um, Baylor is a little bit of the same thing, uh, although I would say that this is it's it's a weird it's a weird way to 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 look at it. They're hundred eighth in these returning production uh, standards. Uh, part of that is that they are let's see they're fifty first in offense. A lot of that offense coming back, including Charlie Brewer, mm-hmm. uh, including a lot of those running backs, including a, a fair you know a fair amount of the offensive lines coming back. Offense going to be okay, but the defense is getting wiped. 127th, third to last, fourth to last in returning production on defense. They are getting absolutely clobbered by graduation, and so and early entry. James Lynch is leaving as well. And so, on one hand, you can look at this and say, okay, well, you know, offense maybe be able to take a step forward. On the other hand, what was the strength of Baylor last year? Their defense. Yeah. Their defense was what guided them to their great season. The offense was. Fine. I don't think I'd necessarily categorize it any better than that. It was fine. It did what it needed to do. But the defense was what was really, really impressive. They are getting wiped. But and they've got a new they got a new coach. <laughs> but it's like it's, a really good yeah, defensive coach. Yeah, I was like fixing to say he's one of the very few super strong defensive head coaches. Right. So that and so helps. it's there's a little bit of I don't know. That's a hard. That's hard to gauge there. That like. A little bit. It's that Larry David gif of like, look over here, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which, know. which I was gonna ask you too was when I was typing this in before the show and I saw Baylor right there mm-hmm. and I started thinking about the defensive side of the ball and Aranda and everything like that. Is does new coaching staff have anything to no. do with these rankings? No, because I thought that with North Texas too, with bringing back in Eckler right. and that kind of stuff with the defense. So I was like, that could be a whole. Obviously, that's way too much for yeah. this specific formula, but. That could change the numbers a little bit, too. Yeah, and so Baylor, on, on the whole, has 51% of their total production coming back from a year ago. Um, but a, 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 the vast majority of that loss is coming on the defensive side. Then there's a bit of a leap. Up next is, is Texas Tech at 81st. Uh, and uh, the good news is that a lot of that defense is going to come back. So hopefully, if you believe that they should take a step forward in the second year under Matt Wells, well, here we go. Uh, f- there's their 47th uh, or 44th rather in defense in, in defensive production return. Offense is getting getting hammered, right? Uh, the offense is going to get hammered a little bit, uh, and I think part of that is the quarterback situation is still really up in the air. We don't really know what's going to go on there, but they are 106th in returning offensive production, but 44th in 100 uh, in returning defensive production. Uh, next up on the list at number 70 is TCU. Uh, if you like that offense, good news. 75% of their production is back next year. 75%. But that's that's pretty good, including Shane Bouchelle, obviously, James Prochet, etc. Some really good, uh, or Reggie Roberson, rather. They've got some really good uh, talent coming back. Uh, defense, taking a little bit of a hit. Uh, 97th, 50, just 53% of their defensive production is coming back. But uh, they're about middle of the pack there at 70th uh, on, on these rankings. Ne- next up is TCU at 64th. Um, and... Pretty pretty mixed bag here. They're 75th. They got 61% of their offense coming back uh, and 68% of their defense coming back. But, you know, from a team that was a little bit disappointing, still needs to find a quarterback, need to figure out exactly what's going to go on. I feel like, again, my my view on Texas uh, TCU hasn't changed. 
when they find a quarterback, that's when I'm going to start buying in on TCU. Right. Right now, you know, maybe they have one. I haven't seen it yet. I got to see it before I'm willing to buy it. They they clock in at, uh, at 64th. Next up, right ahead of them is at, is UTSA at 63rd. Um, a lot of that offense is back, but the offense was Basura last year. Yeah. So what do you, what does that mean? Jeff Trailer's more of an offensive guy. First year coach there. Defense will need a little bit of, of retooling there as they're getting they're bringing back just 53 percent of their defensive uh, returning production. They're 63rd on that list. So, a little, again, a little bit of a mixed bag. Then it's a big leap. I was going to say, this is a big Then it's jump. a big leap. Next up is, at number 21, it's Texas. Uh, Texas has 74% of their uh, production back from last year. Which, uh, again, Sam being a huge portion of that. Not only that, you'd think. But actually, what's interesting is 62nd in offense coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 62nd, they lose a couple of offensive linemen. They lose some receivers on the outside. But having a quarterback back obviously is important, right. important, right? The biggest thing in the, in the biggest most important thing for them is almost all that secondary's back. In fact, yeah. I think the entire secondary's back. So if you want them to make that leap, and if we buy into what Bill Connolly said, which is that having continuity in the mm-hmm. secondary is the most important thing on a defense, well, TC or Texas has got that. Uh, you know, they've got f- their 14th in the nation as far as returning defensive production is concerned. So. If yeah, that, that matters to you. I was going to say, this Texas one would be the prime example of if he's accurate that the continuity of it mm-hmm. means more than necessarily Correct. The, the players or anything like that. I totally agree. Next up at 16 is A&M. A&M's got a ton of offense coming back. 80th and uh, prepare to hear that a lot during the offseason. That offense is coming back almost entirely intact. Um, they got to figure out that uh, offensive line, though. 70, yeah, but again... What they're looking at, a lot of those guys are back, mm-hmm. right? A lot of those, a lot of that offensive line is coming back with the experience, with experience, and so, in some cases, multi-year experience. Mm-hmm. So that factors in. They have a quarterback coming back in Kellen Mond, which a lot of teams can't say. They have some receivers coming back that are, I think, are going to make make some noise. The defensive side, so the offense is, is really good. The defense is pretty good as well. Thirty seventh, they're seventy four percent. On the whole, they've got seventy seven percent of their their uh, production coming back. Pretty darn good. Next up, into the top 10, Hoot Hoot, it's Rice. Your team. Your one of favorite. the great things, one of the great things about being really, really, really young is that all those guys come back. Mm-hmm. And if you believe that they started peaking at the, at the end of the year, then you've got a lot of things. What's, or you've got a lot of reason for optimism. What's really interesting, offense is only okay. 63%, they're 70th in the nation. But they have more defensive production returning than anyone in the country. Hmm. Number one. Numero uno in Rice. And so, if you think that Rice got better at the end of the year, if the offense can pick something up, there's a chance that they make that leap based on these numbers. Finally, the number one team is Houston. And Houston, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little interesting. Obviously, they played the youth movement a lot last mm-hmm. year, right? In that very bizarre year. <laughs> they, are not, they are third in the nation, only behind Northwestern and Georgia Tech as far as returning production is concerned. Offense, a lot of it coming back, right? 73% of their returning offenses. But again, the big advantage here is their defense. 93%. Third in the nation in defensive returning production. And again, that secondary is going to be a year older. That secondary is going to be a year more experienced, whereas they were getting roasted oh, last yeah. year. All those guys are back. Maybe some continuity in the coaching staff will help. So if you're looking for reason for optimism for Houston, there's plenty of it, especially on the defensive side, because you've got a lot of those guys coming back. 93% of their defensive production is back from last year. This is a piece up at ESPN.com. Uh, college football teams with the most returning production in 2020. Our friend Bill Conley wrote it. Very much worth your time. It's interesting just to dive into the numbers. He goes conference by conference as well, as far as looking at who's got the best uh, stuff coming back. Uh, it's really, really interesting to dive into those numbers. So check that out at ESPN.com. Uh, our friend Bill Conley is writing. I really like how specific this one, too, was to returning players. Since I, Maybe it's just because we've been focusing on, you know, recruiting and sure. all that so much lately. It was cool to take a look like, oh, yeah, well, there's still – very valuable players. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of guys coming back. So. Also, Brett Homan said, uh, we should get you to do that for every high school team. Well, you've got a 400-page magazine you'll love. 